Hey guys, real quick, the Patreon campaign is live. Uh, up at the top, I'll put a link where you guys can click on it at the beginning of this video, just so you guys know it's there. I'm still new with Patreon, so bear with me as we kind of uh, figure this out together. And I'll have outros that basically also link to it from now on. I won't mention it again at the beginning of videos, but I just wanna let you know it is live and ready to go. Here we go. Hey guys, in the background, I'm dimpling. Yay! So I'm working on all of the holes on the skin and all the various parts that go under the skin that, that match up with the skin using my DRDT2 by Experimental Arrow. So I chose to get a dimpling machine using that lever as opposed to the, the, the C-frame whack-a-mole that I like to call it. I've talked about this before. One of the reasons I got it was because everyone that I talked to that used the DRDT2 told me that it creates a very uh, consistent dimple, which I agree, uh, it, it, it does a really great job. Uh, other people alluded to that it also uh, prevents mistakes, that very rarely can you make a mistake or uh, do what you can do with the, with the whack-a-mole, which is you kind of get in, into position and then you go to whack and the material shifts ever so slightly and boom, you just created a hole where one didn't belong. Well, you can do that with a DRDT2 as well. Um, so through the power of editing, I kind of skipped this bit. And yeah, I was frustrated at that point. What I had done is I had placed the skin on the uh, the DRDT2, went to pull down, and just as I pulled down, I kind of lifted my hand off, and it was enough to shift it ever so slightly. I did the did the crimp, and I put a dimple, half a dimple width away from the actual spot. It actually just poked a hole right through it. That thing is powerful enough that when you when you pull it down that lever, uh, there's so much force there, you don't even feel that it's creating a new hole. Um, crap. Well, no big deal. Uh, I just ordered a new one of those skins. It was like $18 in shipping. Not an expensive mistake by any stretch of the meaning. And I'd rather do it right than try to repair it. So just so, so you guys know, uh, uh, the DRDD2 I think is a wonderful device, but it is very much possible to create a new hole just, just by pulling down on it. And uh, you'll have a nice new dimpled hole, but it's not where it was meant to be. So anyways, I just thought I'd let you know that's what's going on. Uh, I'll talk here in a minute about uh, that particular skin as I as I explain how I go through skins uh, and clean them up and why that particular piece of skin is now scrap. So while I continue to work in the background, I thought I'd talk a moment about skin and e uh, skin edge preparation. When Vans forms the aluminum sheeting, which ultimately becomes the edge of the skins or the skins of the, of the airplane, the edges are kind of rough. They're a little bit rough. I think that the machine that does the cutting does so in about two and a half inch slices. And so if you look at the edge of the skin, you can see that there are some definite stair step edges that you probably should go ahead and take off. Is it required that you take all these little stair step edges off? Probably not. But I think the quality of the aircraft that you're producing uh, if you do take them off, is going to be much higher. And so this is how I go about taking them off. So I have here a piece of scrap aluminum uh, that is actually an aileron skin that I messed up, uh, different video, that uh, I'm going to use to demonstrate how I go about cleaning up this edge. I'm going to try to take some photos and show you this edge and how rough it is uh, along here. It's hard to visualize, but you can certainly feel it. It's chunk, 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 chunk as you run your finger across it. You might even be able to hear it. Like I can't even pull the tool across it smoothly. Hear that pop, 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 pop. So that you can't use a tool like this just to get it out, unfortunately. Here are the tools I'm going to be using today. Um, a regular file, a uh, by the way, this file has a good flat edge on one side and a round on the other. Uh, you really only need a flat edge. You don't actually need the round side. One of these uh, aluminum scrapers that have this swiveling head, those are handy. And one of these V-shaped edge tools. 
Since this is just a scrap piece of aluminum, I'm not terribly worried about messing it up. Uh, and so I've just got it sort of viced down, you know, gripped down on either end of it. You're going to want to be more careful, obviously, when you're using your final product. I would definitely suggest doing this before you do pretty much anything else to the skin. I mean, this should be part of your skin preparation. And it's just, it's to get rid of these chunks. Uh, this chunk, 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 chunk. Chunk, you know, and you can't just use this, unfortunately. I mean, you can go up and down. All you're doing is digging that chunk in deeper. So instead, I use this. I just go along the edge and give it some just gentle scrapes. In a way, this actually makes it a little worse because if you feel across here, you can definitely feel there's a big ridge, right? But just going back and forth along the flat of the skin to get those big divots, those, those cut points I don't know what you call those, by the way, but get those off seems to really pay dividends. Um, and then once you've done that, then use your V-tool to give the final cut. And now I pulled it smoothly and it just kind of squealed as I pulled across instead of the chunk, 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 which was, was doing before. Sounds good. Um, very light pressure, doesn't take a lot of effort. And finally, I use this just to give it a ever so slight rounding. I mean, it's not much weight here at all. I'm probably just the weight of the tool sitting like that uh, on there. And you'll see there's a very fine, I don't know if you can tell, there's a very fine little bit of aluminum sticking off there. If it gets really, really long, you know you did a good job and you got a sharp tool. Uh, but you give it ever so slightly a pull across the bottom and, or the top and the bottom rather, and then you feel the side and it's almost perfectly smooth. I mean, that's that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. So that's how I prepare all the skins. I've done it on every skin so far, uh, although I will admit probably my empanage I was not quite as thorough as I am being today. So I do have to go back and touch up some of the skins where I can. So do you have to do this? No, I don't think so. I don't imagine those little, those little chunks that little that little stair step are all that bad but is it a good idea yeah i think so i think it uh, you know it affects the overall quality and the end result only in a positive way so anyways there you go so what you see me doing here in this shot is i'm pondering a mistake um in the interest of sharing everything i do I show the good with the bad. So what I did, and the instructions are very clear, I screwed up. Uh, it, it, the instructions say to dimple the holes in the skin that correspond with the stiffeners. I got overzealous and I just dimpled the whole skin. Now, ultimately, the whole skin needs to be dimpled, but I jumped the gun. This is only a problem because that trailing edge piece has to be put between the two pieces of skin and you drill through it. And then once you're done drilling through it, you go back and you uh, machine countersink that trailing edge and dimple the skins. Well, now that the skins are dimpled, when you put the trailing edge in there, because it has not been machine countersunk yet, doesn't quite line up correctly. So, I have to ponder fixing that. Um, can't undimple the skin, so probably what I'm gonna go ahead and do, drill holes as best I can through the trailing edge piece, machine countersink them, put it in place, dr uh, check my drill holes to make sure it's all good to go, and proceed as normal. I think it'll be okay. I, I don't think this is a catastrophic mistake by any means, but read the plans, <laughs> pay attention, don't get in a hurry, uh, and I, I glossed over, uh, I think it was two words, uh, and that was enough to make this mistake. Whoops. As always, guys, thanks a bunch. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you'd give me that thumbs up down below, I'd really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because believe it or not, that helps the rankings the way YouTube works. And now I have a Patreon campaign. There should be a link you can click on above. Thanks, everybody.